What's up, YouTube? Welcome back to the Chance Bishop Show for episode 79 of our Madden 24 franchise mode here on the Chance of Bishop Show. 79 episodes deep into this series. And, well, Archie Manning, he had himself Offense Player of the Week last week. Good for him. Uh, but this week we are taking on Micah Parsons and the Dallas Cowboys. You know, Micah has become the face of the Dallas Cowboys, of course, in this series. Because why wouldn't he be? He is the only, I say this as nicely as possible, he is the only competent, high-functioning, productive cowboy we have on the team. Uh, let's be honest here. I'm not looking at Dak Prescott and going, oh boy, I can't wait for Dak Prescott to be the leader here. You know, Mr. Stat Patter, oh, hey, look, he threw for 400 yards, uh, but he also got blown out, you know, 30 to 17 and he scored 14 of those 17 points in the fourth quarter uh, after, you know, the offense decided I was going to do something because the defense is like, yeah, we're just not going to let them blow us up. Uh, Klubnik is the starting QB. Dak's the backup. Martinez is their running back. They have a full back on the roster. Good for them. C.D. Lamb. They got Terry Bussey. Uh, Burton. They got Treor. Thrash. And that's, they only have five receivers on the team. Jake Ferguson is their... Uh, tight end, Javon Foster's a left tackle, Tyler Smith at left guard, Dotson, that guy's at center, Oakman's at left guard, right guard, and Terrence Steele, uh, there he goes at right tackle, Micah, 99 overall defensive end, uh, they also have Jonah Ajoyne at the other end, um, Mozzie Smith is DT2 on this team, remember when Cowboys fans were like, oh yeah, Mozzie Smith, you know, just as good, if not better than Jalen Carter, and then everyone's like, oh, yeah, Mozzie Smith, he's that dog, you know. He's the kind of football player you want on a team. You know why he's the kind of dog you want on a football team? Because he doesn't actually want to play football. He just wants to hit people. Even though there's, like, a huge history of those players never actually panning out in the NFL. Because, well, they don't fundamentally progress and get any better. They just know what they know, and that's absolutely it. They never take the next step and get anything done productively with their skill sets. So yeah, Mozzie Smith, absolute bust of a draft pick, let's be honest. We're going to stop the short pass game. We're going we're gonna to run against them. They are their 16th ranked rush defense. They are the first, they're the best passing off, uh, passing defense in the league somehow. I don't know how they are. I mean, I guess they have Trayvon Diggs and Bland, and, like, an okay secondary, I guess. But I, I, it has to be because of those two. Those two just got to have to, be, I guess, locked down enough where they got nothing to worry about back there. So, I mean, I'm... Mm, all right, we're just going to run against. There's nothing to worry about. We generally have nothing really to worry about running against this team. Uh, this team is honestly a joke. Uh, but here we go. Offense, making sure no one is... No one's hurt. No one's getting any... And he banged up no boo-boos here. No one's going to be out for a week, hopefully. Uh, but here we go. Offensive line is good. And Lane Johnson, the last one on the list, out with an ACL sprain for this week. That's going to be brutal. Archie Manning, he had himself a good week of practice. He gets himself an upgrade. He's a 96 overall with the morale boost right there. Good old Archie Manning. I love how fast he's progressing. Like He just got put on like the best team possible for a rookie QB. Uh, Cooper Cousins, natural right tackle. Uh, he is a right guard, I guess a natural right guard. Moved in the tackle for depth reasons because we didn't have a backup right tackle. And he's got the size and the weight. Uh, but he's going to be filling in this week for Lane Johnson. And, well, he's going to have to go against Micah Parsons. So we get it. Micah Parsons, probably a Hall of Fame defensive end, barring like severe injury. You know, but even then, he was a cowboy. If Drew Pearson can get in the Hall of Fame, Micah Parsons can get in the Hall of Fame if he retired three days ago. Let's be honest. Like, the Hall of Fame for the NFL is so broken. It doesn't even it doesn't even make any sense. Because if you're talking that Drew Pearson gets in the Hall of Fame, Deshaun Jackson then belongs in the Hall of Fame. Plain and simple. You know, receiving yard-wise, touchdowns, very comparable. Deshaun also has, like, the most what, 90-plus yard touchdowns, some insane stat like that, 75-yard touchdowns. Uh, he he is just the most dominant speed threat 
you know, of the 2000s, of the mid to mid 2000s, early 2010s. Uh, but yeah, Deshaun Jackson over here, you know, he is a force to be reckoned with. Let's be honest. Uh, but here we go. We are getting underway here, uh, and the. Eagles are getting ready to kick off to the Dallas Cowboys. So, 7-3 Cowboys lead here. 37 seconds left in this first quarter. Defense looking to get a stop, and pass rush is going to get home to Klubnik. Jalen Carter with the sack. That makes it a third and 28. Uh, so, third and 28 now from the 36. Here we go. Can we get another stop here on defense? Or we'll at least hold them to a field goal. No first downs allowed. They're on the screen pass. That one off the head of the running back. Klubnik just did not get that one done. Here we go. Kick is going to be up, and that's going to be wide left. So the Eagles get the ball back here. They're going to be at the 22-yard line. Pass rush going to not quite get to Manning in time. It's going to be a little screen pass right there, and that's going to be the Will Shipley. He gets across the first down marker down at the 15. Now here at the 1, hand off to the fullback, Luke Leachy, technically at the tight end. But there you go. He's in there for the touchdown. You like to see that for the young fella. He's got himself his first rushing touchdown of the game. So the Eagles, you know, who have an unstoppable running attack right now for whatever reason, you know, Will Shipley has just become unhinged when it comes to the running back. Like, he just does not go down at all. Dallas Goddard picks up a non-contact injury right there. Somewhere along the blocking way, he picked up an injury. And Will Shipley, again, bounces off his guard and just ends up in the end zone there for the touchdown. Second rushing touchdown of the game here for the Eagles. First of the game for Will Shipley. Now up 17 to 10. Cowboys yeah, are going to try and tie this thing up. It's third and 14. And that is going to be a screen pass. And Martinez is going to get that first down right there. So that's a first down for the Cowboys. You hate to love a first down to the Cowboys, especially on a third and long screen pass. Third and 14 again. Come on, Eagles. Let's get to this one. Pass rush, get home. Pass rush doesn't get there. Drop by CD Lamb, though, in the rain. Travis Hunter. You know, no fly zone here, big fella. Now, second and three for the Eagles coming out from the 20 yard line. Shipley in the backfield. Shipley handoff. Shipley runs hard, gets the first down. He gets tackled at the, it's called the 15 yard line. Pick up a five. Now, third and one from that seven. Shipley again, and Shipley again running hard. Stopped at the two. He's got 14 carries, a touchdown over 70 yards on the day. First and goal from that two, handoff to Shipley again, and Shipley runs through Leighton Van Der Esch. That is going to be a touchdown there for Will Shipley, the Clemson running back. Good old Will Shipley. And there you go, that's going to be the wrap of this game right here. Those are the highlights for this one. Nick Sirianni is victorious, because of course he is. He's the better coach between not Mike McCarthy and Nick Sirianni. Uh, but the Eagles get the big victory here. Out comes Coach Sirianni to shake his opponent's hand. There you go. Big old handshake and just kept it pushing. There you go. Good old Reed Blankenship hat on the back there. He's definitely stepped up as being a linebacker. Uh, but there you go. 200 yards, a touchdown for Archie Manning. Not too shabby for being in the rain here. Uh, Rushing-wise, 75 yards, two tutties for Will. Uh, four for 18 for Manning. And one for a touchdown for Luke Leach. You picked up one yard on one carry. Uh, receiving wise, 65 for Goddard, 50 for Devontae Smith, 39 for A.J. Brown, Shipley 33, and 15 for Brendan Rice. Only Devontae Smith, though, had the touchdown on the day, so not too bad for uh, Devontae. Cooper Cousins, he allowed one sack. That's fine. That's fine right there. So the rookie, I and mean, he allows one sack. It's, Mike, it's Micah Parsons. Like, he held his own. He had himself a good game. Uh, five pancakes allowed by Landon Dickerson, or five pancakes created. Tags led by Keely Ringo and Jeremiah Trotter, who both had nine TFLs tied between Nolan Smith and Jordan Davis and Keely Ringo. Two and a half sacks from Jalen Carter, sack from Reed Blankenship, sack from Nolan Smith, sack from Hassan, half sack from Jordan Davis. No picks on the day. We don't really get a lot of interceptions, it seems like. Elliott, perfect on the day, one for one and four for four. And now here we go, Stonehouse. Two, three punts for a buck ninety-one, averaging sixty-three yards a punt. Uh, no kick returns and one punt return for ten yards. Not bad on the punt return advantage for Britt and Covey, who is by far the best punt return man in the entire NFL. I'm just saying, if you if you manual Britt and Covey, he he kills it out there. Luke Lachey, there you go. He gets himself an upgrade after he had his one touch on a one carry today. He is a seventy overall vertical threat tight end now. So, I mean, he is, what, tight end two behind Dallas Goddard. Now, here we go. Dallas Goddard also picked up an upgrade, even though he uh, picked up a non-contact injury. 
So I'm going to try to make him scheme fit right there. There you go, 89 overall. Uh, 88 vertical threat tight end there for Dallas. Got it. You like to see that for Dallas. Uh, but here comes the media after the game. You know, hey, we just said we just want you to beat the Cowboys. And, hey, the Eagles did that. They beat the Cowboys by every every sense of the imagination. Uh, preparing for, for conditions like that is near impossible. I get it. It's raining. It, it's rain. I know. Uh, but when you have a team like the Cowboys who have a minus in run defense, you take advantage of that anyway. So it wasn't really a minus, especially since one of the Eagles' pluses is just their rushing attack. You know, it, it just kind of worked out perfectly. Uh, there you go, plus 1,000 XP. And now here we go again, another press conference. Uh, coach, uh, has played really well every part of the season and is off to a hot start. You know, how much is this because of Archie Manning? Dude, you got to praise the kid. The kid has done very well this season, you know. He is progressing as good as you would want any quarterback to progress. You know, second-year QB here, you know, he's done. He's not a rookie anymore. And he's he's getting it done, and he's doing what everything that's asked of him, and then and then some. You know, there's no way around how good of a player Archie Manning is. Uh, but you know, next episode, the next game we're playing this episode is gonna be Jared Goff and the Lions. Uh, Jameer Gibbs is their running back right here, running back one. Jameer Gibbs. You know, they trade DeAndre Swift the Eagles because they drafted him. But I mean, okay, back up. Uh, Luke Pohl is their fullback right here. Another team with a fullback. Amon Ross St. Brown, Donovan Peoples-Jones, Jameson Williams, Troy Franklin, Christian Driver, and Sam Laporta, you know, their tight end. Uh, you know, what a, what a character, you know, Jameson Williams is, you know, supposed to have just unreal speed size combo and has just never really gotten a shot, you know, just due to never really being healthy. You know, he was drafted injured. He didn't really do much his rookie season, if I remember correctly. Um, you don't really think he did much this past season either. Uh, but then again, we're talking about in-game players here, opposed to IRL players. So they're entirely different. Uh, but Jack Campbell, middle linebacker. Cole Holcomb's also here, former uh, Washington commander. Uh, Trice, they got, come here, uh, that guy. Watson, Lester, Sage, Ryan. That former Eagle, Sage, Ryan. Uh, we had him on the team last season or two seasons ago. One of our cut cornerbacks, you know, just depth guy. Justin Payne's their kicker, and Jack Fox is their punter. I want to say he's still their punter. Uh, how do we stop this team? Well, they are the 32nd ranked passing offense, so yeah, I'm not expecting them to throw the damn ball. So let's just stop Jameer Gibbs. Uh, Gibbs, six, you know, six best rushing attack in the league. So makes sense. Let's stop him. Defensively, they are the 32nd rush defense. Uh, 13th passing defense. So um, I'm not really worried about this team defensively. Or offensively for the Eagles. I think the Eagles are going to find a groove. And they're just going to kind of run with it. You know, especially if you can just take away the ability to use Jameer Gibbs effectively. Or even just consistently. You know, shut him down for, you know, for whole drives. You know, back-to-back -back three drives in a row. And, you know, you score, you know, one or two times between those inabilities to advance the ball. And the Eagles are going to walk away with a very easy victory here. I really don't see the Eagles having any sort of struggles with this team. Uh, but hey, man, that's just that's just me going into the episode. That's not even how we're gonna, the episode's going to play out. You know, the episode can play out entirely differently, uh, and I could just be none the wiser. Uh, but here we go, uh, scrolling through our offense there, and that's uh, no one. No one's hurt. No one's hurt that I saw at least. Bunch of players getting upgrades here. Let's go, Eagles. AJ Brown. He's a 97 overall. I mean, playmaker, scheme fit, dudes, to make him a deep threat. Dude, I've had so many lucky, uh, not even lucky, just good matchups where if you put him one-on-one -on -one and there's press coverage, and he just blows past that corner on one-on-one -on -one coverage every time. Travis Hunter gets an upgrade, he's a 92 overall corner. Uh, good old Travis Hunter. Keely Ringo as well. He gets himself an upgrade. I like to see Keely getting involved here. 90 overall Keely Ringo. Uh, Will Shipley, 83 overall, make him an 84 overall running back here. I like to see Ke uh, I like to see Will just getting up there, especially because you got to think, we went from 99 overall running back, DeAndre Swift, who was with the Eagles for, I guess, since year one of this series, and we were able to, you know, work up Will Shipley's ability to be a starting cover running back, and Swift goes down and goes, oh, wow, 
Look at that. We could save a lot of money by trading Andre Swift and just using the backup running back as our running back one. Dez Ricks, the second year corner, gets an upgrade. Brendan Rice is going to get an upgrade here. He's like, what, third or fourth year receiver at this point in his career? You know, he's he's getting up there uh, with tenure here at the Eagles. Eric Armstead, the former Niner, I want to say he's a Niner, gets himself an upgrade. I like to see Eric Armstead also just improving with this Eagles team. Kobe Black here, rookie corner we drafted in like the second round. He gets himself an upgrade, 76 overall. Michael Jurgens, depth left guard. Uh, I'm not sure what year he's on. He's either on year three or four right now, so he's on one of the two. Justin Scott, first round D tackle. He's a 76 overall D tackle. Good old run stopper. Put that man in the middle. He's going to plug any hole you have. Jordan Battle. He's on a long term, just depth piece, uh, depth, you know, signing uh, contract. Uh, Cody Mouch. Mouch. Yeah, yeah, same thing. Uh, Multi year depth contract. A uh, bunch of other guys right here. Look at them all. Just so many, so many depth guys right here. We're not gonna. We don't have 48 minutes to go through them all. So yeah, we're just gonna auto upgrade them. 12 players were upgraded. Great. Now getting actually getting into the game right now. I mean that's what you like to see. You want to get actually get in to play the game. Uh, but Jeremiah Trotter here. You go take a look at his uh, stats on the season. And now here we go. Out comes Jared Goff and the Detroit Lions. Uh, so, Goff and the Lions here, you know, they've had some success recently, uh, you know, but they've also kind of been, you know, cast aside here by the Eagles, who have just always been a little better. There's been a lot of really good teams here in the NFC, you know, just in the yeah, N NFC, yeah, NFC, that's the correct one. Uh, but the Eagles have always just kind of been a step ahead of everyone, which uh, you got you to gotta give that credit to Jeffrey Lurie and Howie Roseman. Who have, construct, who have honestly just constructed probably one of the best all-around teams in the NFL. You know, we're talking about 76 overall D-tackles and corners being, you know, DT3s and corner 4s. Yeah, those are corner 1s and DT1s on a lot of teams. But here we go, 3rd and 12 for the Lions. That's going to be a big sack there by Nolan Smith, who takes down Jared Goff from behind. 4th and 22, sack back at the 34-yard line here. And that's going to be a missed field goal. Okay, good there for the Lions. Hand off to Shipley. Shipley's having himself a career year. Uh, he gets taken down at the 7, so he's got 4 carries for 14 yards on the day. Uh, first and goal now for the Eagles from that 7-yard line. That's going to be backing up here is Archie. That's going to be thrown. That's going to be caught by Devontae Smith for the touchdown. There you go. The Eagles go up 7 nothing. First touchdown of the game it goes to the Philadelphia Eagles. Who you like to see that right there? Uh, the good guys getting themselves a good, a good, you know, good lead here. Now 14 to three here in this one. That's gonna be underneath to Brendan Rice and Rice bouncing off one tackle takes that to the 42 on to the Detroit side of the field. Uh, now coming from that, that Rice catch, here we go. Manning dropping back. Manning. That's gonna be side line caught to Dallas Goddard with 23 seconds left. He's smart enough to get out of bounds. Uh, don't need to burn a time uh, timeout yet. Uh, but 15 seconds left here. That's going to be caught there by, uh, is that Ricky Perseal? Is that 86? That is 86. Ricky Perseal. And he is going to get out of bounds at the 10-yard line. 11 seconds left. One timeout. So we might have one, maybe two plays. End zone caught. Devontae Smith. There you go. Just waited for that thing to develop. And Smith just found the opening there. Now about four and a half, uh, just under over four and a half here in the third quarter. That's going to be a first down caught by Ricky Perseal. Number, or not Dallas Goddard. It's the 88-86. They look the same real quick, but they're not the same. That one's going to be caught there by 88 as well. That's going to be Dallas Goddard, who gets the touchdown here, who extends the Eagles' lead by 7. 28-3 from the 1. That's going to be a quick throw. Devontae Smith, his second touchdown of the game there. And the Eagles are adding insult to injury here as they are running up the score against the Detroit Lions. Uh, Dan Campbell and Lions, yeah, they, they were not victorious this game. Nick Sciani and the Eagles, they were, though. So good old Eagles, 35-10 to 10 is the final score. Uh, you like to see that there for your Philadelphia Eagles. Good old Philadelphia, you, you, you love it. You really do love to see that one right there. Uh, but handshakes all around between uh, Goff and the Eagles. Archie Manning, 26 for 33 for 270-plus yards. Five touchdowns on the day. 
Shipley, 16 carries, 57 yards, 44 for Manning. Uh, receiving yards wise, 110, four touchdowns for Devontae, 81 a touchdown for Dallas, 28 for Rice, 26 for Brown. Shipley had 15 yards. No sacks allowed. Uh, one sack was allowed, actually, by Lane Johnson, who got no pancakes on the day. Tackles led by Nolan Smith, who had seven, as well as for TFLs, who had two. Two, ta uh, two sacks for Nolan, two sacks from uh, Jalen Carter. One pick from Keeley Ringo, you like to see that. Elliott Perfect from Extra Point with five. Stonehouse, uh, two punts for buck 26, average 63 yards a punt. No kick return yards, but eight, uh, 16 punt return yards there for Britt and Covey. Averaging 5.3 yards a punt return. Uh, Whatever for the game, Archie Manning goes, I don't, uh, I don't have the game I set out to have, but personal achievements are secondary. I guess, I guess he wanted to have 300 yards before the game. I guess that's what the ask was, get him 300 yards, but he, my guy just threw five touchdowns. Who cares how many yards he had? He had five touchdowns. Uh, so he's going to have plus five medium and deep accuracy next game. Great. Love to see that right there. Good old Archie. Got to get himself an upgrade. And those are going to be used against the New York Giants uh, away at the Meadowlands. But if you guys enjoyed this episode, hit that like button. Comment down below. Text on YouTube, though. Peace out. Rock on. Stay super classic. Catch you on the next episode here on the Chance of Bishop Show YouTube channel. Later, everyone. Stay tuned for the next episode. Later. Bye. See ya.